gigging. Yes. Tour show, warm up. Warming what up you for do- the tour, yeah. All right, great. Um, the, the Troublemaker Tour, tour um, which is September through to December. Um, as long as we're not in the middle of the eighth or ninth wave by then. Uh, feels like uh, we're gonna be, don't it? It's um, uh, and it's it's a tour with you as you as Simon. It's me Rocken. as me, which is something that is only just recently happening, um, because you get to talk about other people's dicks more. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you no, so I've always done stuff in character. People probably know me most as Lee Nelson, Jason Bent, yeah, all the yeah. stunts, and this is um, yeah, me being me. What what? What made you make that shift? Because your characters are so well loved and almost every year for the last five or six years, you've had a seminal moment, whether it's Seth Blatter, Theresa May, whatever. What made you think, right, now I just want to go on and talk about Dan's dad's foreskin? (laughs) (laughs) It's a great question that you sort of ruined at the end. (laughs) Because it's like, well, I remember in the second lockdown, I was thinking, I need to talk about Dan Nightingale's dad's dick. (laughs) We're gonna uh, prove Lee Carl- Nelson is just going to ruin that for We're going to prove Carl wrong, okay? We can carry on <laughs> no! with dick stuff. And we're going to put it at the end of every question and every answer. And we'll get... Dan, is your father still on this planet? <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll get him on the bloody phone. I mean, you know, <laughs> physically. That maybe him maybe not, before. like, emotionally. No, no okay. Um, and do you ever chat to him about oh, it? Oh, no, are we actually <laughs> no, trying no, no, to no. do that? Okay, stop, stop. Okay, Come so... Um, yeah, what, what, what made the shift? What made the shift? It just felt like it was the right time. So I've always naturally veered toward the characters. That was always something. That was the very first time I stepped on stage. Um, why? Can I ask why? I know it's a, a it's, but just as a comic, because I work with you, you probably won't remember. I think we did a gig in Putney like 15 years ago, maybe. Yeah. And you were doing Lee Nelson. And it was at a time where y- you and a couple of guys were doing characters. But I'd started work at the Heiner in Newcastle, which was it was almost like a D badge jonglers and the character acts that I work with, it was like a thing that you could see was dying. Like it, it, it just, the guys there were really safe sort of jonglers character acts. And that, uh, th- there was like Dominic Frisby, who's gone on to do good stuff. We've talked about it before was doing Morris, the Morris dancer. Yeah. And it was exactly what you think it is. And then you were like sort of my age, a couple of years within my age. And we were at the time, like the young wave of comedy, uh, but you chose to do a character, which was uh, it, unusual, wasn't it? Yeah. I like mean, post Kitson, post Ross Noble, where they were the guys, the cool young guys that were getting success. People weren't doing that. There wasn't an, a, there wasn't a considered choice. There wasn't a, you know, a Boris, shall we remain or shall we leave? Let's weigh up the options. Yeah. It just felt like that's what I would do. That is what I do characters. They, I, you know, used to dick around in characters for years and years, inhabit a character, pretend to be someone. That, well, of course, I'll just do that on stage. Had I known about everyone crashing and burning <laughs> at the hyena, <laughs> maybe there would have been more of a... But to me, it just there wasn't... Uh, yeah, just you, what I did. Did you ever have characters when you... Uh, were, you, were, you were you ever a practicing doctor? I was a practicing doctor, which oh brings God, us nicely that. back on to chatting about... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Specialising uh, in circumcision. No. Did you do Thank any you. private health care? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was one young Where's man, my age dick? seven. <laughs> I was work experienced at the time. Yeah, no. That would be weird if you were a bit part of the operation, because I'd have been seven and you'd have been about ten. Yeah, well, there were a lot of clamps needed that day. I was the 24th <laughs> clamp. <laughs> Am I still part of this? So... Um, yeah, because you 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 were a doctor. Did you did you practice your characters then? Did you ever try and no? But out of seeing many doctors, came one of my doctor characters, and look like all characters, they're kind of people who you see as you're living your life. And so yeah, it was pretty natural to have a doctor character. But um, yeah, and I think part of the questions to why I did characters, which I'm only just kind of getting into now, is because. You know what? That felt more comfortable than me yeah, than going yeah. on as myself. And, go, and that's been the really cool thing about doing all the stand-up recently is what it's been like a whole new thing. It's been like starting again. It's been it's been insane. Just the whole, how do you hold the microphone? How do you walk on stage? How do you say hello? Everything that comes as second nature when you should be doing stand-up for a while. You just forget that the beginning parts of it involve has yeah. been that process again. I also, like, if you've never seen, like... 
Simon do Lee Nelson. I, I've worked with you at a, a festival and I, I properly watched it. I think wow, I was home. worked a lot together. I was, Jesus. No, I've worked, we've literally worked together about three times in 20 years. I'm you not even joking. Them, yeah? But I, I watched it because I was intrigued. This character thing has, has always intrigued me. Right. Yeah. And you literally mm. were never eight words away from a fucking big punchline. And I, I, wa I watched it. I was like, this is so well done. The, within the character, there's no floor for yeah, just yeah. this. There's no pointless backstory. You were doing beautifully honed jokes that fit this character. That you know, okay, people got the character, and, and you give them the sort of visual signifiers. People know you already, but there was no wasted words. It was yeah. beautifully put together, punchlines, and and what? how are you finding it now as yourself? Are you still essentially doing those, or is it more storytelling? Are you opening up a bit more? There's definitely more opening up because I wanted everything that I say to not be something that Lee could say. Otherwise, I'm thinking, what's the point in even doing it? Do you ever slip? Do you ever find yourself at a gig is going a bit more tricky? For the, the first like handful of gigs, there was definitely just that absolute want to go back into something that I could do. The best thing, easiest I can liken it to is being suddenly asked to write with your left hand if you're a right-hander yeah. and you're just, you want to grab that pen because you know that you can do it, but you've yeah, got to yeah. keep on trying. You to know keep what the job. letters look like, exactly. but the muscle memory is not quite And it's there, just yeah. coming out. I'm humiliating myself with some A that looks like some, I know what, some screw. Yeah. So the first gigs were super hard, but like anyone at the beginning of stand-up, it's an apprenticeship and you keep going, you get the stage time, you get better and you get better. And now... You know, it's it's great. It is great. Do you and feel a bit more vulnerable, like because when you've when you've got a well honed act, especially I imagine with the like, is that how I saw your stand up with Lee Nelson? Is that how you see it? Is that how you prepared it, or have I uh, like it just looks so well put together, like joke after joke I after think joke that it did work compared to other characters that didn't. I know even the comedy store, like I was regularly doing weekends. Then like we do not have characters, but Lee is so three-dimensional yeah. in his presence and is also a joke machine. So what's there to go wrong? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, and, yeah. Um, if it rips, it rips. What's it, the real, it, exactly, yeah. like it was never a why does that matter? It's just going to make people laugh. But yes, 100% more vulnerability, 100,000% more vulnerability, more vulnerability. And part of the reason why I went into characters like in hindsight was because being oneself is so much more exposing and you've got much more on the line yeah, as yeah, yourself. Yeah. So even when I was smashing the hell out of it as Lee, and I'd step off stage, you know, I didn't need time to get into character. I didn't yeah. need, I just, I would be off stage me. And then the second I grabbed the mic, we've walked on, that's Lee. And then the second I walked off, it was back to me. So even when I was doing the stuff, I never really felt like I owned it. It's really weird to say. Even when I'd smash the hell yeah. out of um, Live at the Apollo or whatever, yeah, yeah. I'd step off stage and it didn't ever really belong to me. This is me. My heart's on the line. My brain's on the line. My feelings are on the line. I'm stood there being myself. So it's a whole... Here's new... something I find really interesting in terms of the, the, the genesis and growth of Simon Brodkin, the stand-up, at a time like this, which is that now you see a lot of people who are getting quite successful online by becoming characters. So the Moe's... Uncle Roger, guest on the podcast, Nigel Ung, they've become characters online and that seems to be successful. So, you know, I sometimes think, oh, I need to do something online. Should I play a character? Have you found, how's that been for you where you're seeing younger comics go online to become characters when you've done, been there, done that? The online, done it the hard way, mate. The hard way, mate, yeah. God, when I did like, characters, yeah. uh, oh, <laughs> people didn't even know what <laughs> character <laughs> was then. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so they were wearing wigs. I was wearing a cape. <laughs> but, no, but, they, but they literally didn't know in some places. Yeah. Like, a lot yeah. of people have watched Lee Nelson not knowing. Yeah. What the, yeah. And that's you know, a big compliment in some ways. But yeah. also then everything gets given to Lee. All the stunts are, oh, that's Lee's stunt. That's it's me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But then... But then social media and the, the quality of the cameras people have got on their yeah, phones yeah. lends itself to be like, I'll oh, just, you know, a minute long yeah, for put, Instagram put or whatever. On. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put a wig on or whatever. I but. think what characters are amazing at is burning brightly very quickly because they instantly take you somewhere, which let's say doing a, you know, a, a, a bit of stand-up down the lens just won't. Yeah. So it's, it's like, um, for, for me, Lee is like fast food. It's like a nice Domino's pizza. 
you know, you what you but this feels potentially like it can be a three course meal. I want my tour. Obviously, you know the great compliment you paid me before about Lee being joke, 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 joke. Yeah. I will always have that in me. I've always seen the main role of a stand up comedian. Let's make them laugh, let's keep on making them laugh. But I want this to be infused with real thoughts, real ideas, real you know, um challenging ideas. I yeah, want to be able to like, opinions, yeah. which is a whole new world for me. Which oh, is man, exciting. It's exciting, genuinely. So where can we, just because we always do the, if you want to see Simon, but like just at this point, that has made me want to see this. Yeah. Like, so yeah. where can we get tickets? Where? So the Troublemaker Tour is available from simonbrodkin.com right. uh, or go to my social, Simon Brodkin on all the Insta and Facebook and yada yada. Selling really well. Just added a few extra dates. Um, come. Is yeah. what I would say, Get it. Get and that sounds um, really good. we will do um, presumably. Your dad is gonna yeah. play some <laughs> role well, now. Of course, the restrictions might come in, so we're hoping that uh, if the restrictions come in, God forbid. But my dad has offered his dick as a sort of like awning for yeah, lovely, yeah. outdoor Great. events. Outdoor events, yeah. So lovely. if anyone owns a field <laughs> <Yeah>. or <laughs> acreage, Simon, what was your favorite? Carl? Carl, let me finish <laughs> my dad's dick banter. <laughs> It's finished. <laughs>